We got this Raspberry Pi about a month ago and maybe a little bit longer, but it has been a fun little toy to play with. We've tried a lot of different things on there, which is just some of the research we do uh, before we make some videos. And I've been really impressed with the performance of the Pi here. And one of the things I wanted to test out in, is the ability for it to run X to go. Because the idea of having a really inexpensive, low wattage box that you can put inside of a network and then have full UI access uh, remotely for, in a really compact package seemed like a neat idea. So I was like, okay, how well will this run? Surprisingly well. And I wanted to try a few different desktops and do a demonstration on how this works. Before we jump into that, let's talk about our sponsors real quick. Uh, IT Pro TV and Tech Supply Direct, two great sponsors of this channel. I have offer codes for both of them down below. The offer code for Tech Supply Direct gets you 10% off. They have an amazing selection of servers and some of them that we have used here for our lab demos and some we've purchased for uh, other client projects and things like that. You can get some great servers that still have lots of life in them that are pretty reasonably priced and then further that by another 10% off with our offer code. Also, IT Pro TV. I can only teach you so much. There is so much out there, and a lot of times, a lot of job requirements or certifications, and further learning is really key to staying relevant in the IT industry. IT Pro TV is not just a sponsor. We started out by using them. They're a great service. They have a wealth of knowledge on a lot of different topics. Go ahead and check them out, IT Pro TV, and we have an offer code for them as well. Back to the Raspberry Pi. So I have an entire video showing you how to load X2Go, and I'm not gonna cover that part in detail, but it's pretty straightforward. There's not any uh, gotchas that I had when setting it up on a Raspberry Pi. Pretty straightforward, but we'll run over the basics real quick here. So I have X2Go client set up on my laptop here, which is running Pop! OS. That question seems to come up all the time, what are you running? And uh, it's sudo apt git install x2go server. And uh, it's already the latest version. It'll install the other dependencies uh, when you put in X2Go server. That part was pretty straightforward. Next, you have to load some desktop environments because the desktop environment that a Raspberry Pi image comes with, and this is a straight Raspbian image, new one just downloaded the other day and kept up to date, uh, that does not have many desktops installed. Well, none of them, I should say, that work with uh, X2Go. So we had to run sudo, oh, dsky, sel, and we threw a couple desktops in here. So if you run this, you can choose the environments. So Debian desktop environment, we chose X, XFCE, KD, Plasma, Cinnamon, Mate, and LXDE. So those are all set up on here. And of course, SSH has to be turned on. I just went ahead and enabled it through the Raspberry Pi software. And I loaded my SSH keys in here. So those of you wondering why I'm logging in without a password, I'll show you right here on the settings. So we go to session preferences. There's the IP address of the Pi. The username is Pi22 and try auto login via SSH agent. That's how we're logging in here. And we're gonna start with the LXDE desktop and let's pull up HTOP here. <clears throat> and what you have here with HTOP is not too much memory usage because well, not much going on. Now, the first thing I'm gonna comment is if you, and I'll leave a link to my whole more in-depth X2Go video, but Right here, you cannot connect to lo local desktop. That just doesn't work inside of there. The reason why, if I understood correctly by reading some of the notes on this, there's not a way for the GPU to render a local session back through. So uh, maybe it's something that will be added in the future. I don't know if there's a big push for it, but what you're doing essentially is you're not connecting to the local desktop, but you're spawning a new session. And the first session we'll start with though is LXDE. So we'll hit okay. And I just got it set to this, but it, we can run it at 1920, uh, 1080. That's not a problem. Just, you can't run it. Um, you can't run, you can run full screen, but you just can't connect to the local displays. This is the part I just want to make sure is clear on that. It will uh, keep giving an error and it won't lock up or crash, but it'll kind of get stuck in a loop on there. Then you'll have to kill some processes that get running. So go ahead and connect with this. And we chose the LXDE desktop and it's reasonably fast. You can see the Pi, it, it's not as instantaneous as it is on a much faster computer, but within a reasonable amount of time, and I left the CPU, so you can see how much processor power is being used up here. It loaded LXDE reasonably fast. And we can open up things, internet, uh, 
I'll pull Zen map open, which is not running as root. One of the ideas I have for how this is a really effective tool is if you needed a low powered box to put inside of a network to enumerate it, and you don't want to necessarily have something big, bulky, or expensive, you could always set up this with either a reverse uh, SSH shell or some other connectivity, um, or just open port 22 so you can get to it and make sure you have key only authentication and lock it down. But it makes an easy way for you to be remotely in another network and scan it. So these are, you know, different tools you may want to use. You have access to a browser, of course, and it uh, opens up the browser reasonable fast. Let's actually open up um, Firefox. And you can see that's obviously going to pull more memory than a whole desktop environment will be once we open up a website. So here's Firefox and let's open up my website because I know it has a lot of intense graphics on it, which is going to be a bit more of a struggle for the pie. So you're watching the memory usage ramp up over here. The processors are, the cores I should say are getting pinned and, but it's rendering it and this is completely usable. Uh, you're seeing the video, a little bit of lag, but not unusable. But if you're doing things like managing a firewall remotely or you know different web enabled devices that are local to uh, external network, you want easy access to them, having a Pi inside that network kind of makes an easy way to do that. Like I said, for network enumeration or things like that. And maybe in the future, I'll be doing some uh, Parrot or Kali Linux. I'll, I'm gonna load on here and give that a try with X2Go because this is also a way you can have a basic pen testing box inside of a network for different testing. Uh, Raspberry Pi seems to run that perfectly fine. So let's go ahead and uh, end this session here. So we'll go here, we'll log out, and shut it down. And go over here, let's try the next one. Now, I'm gonna try KDE last. I did it almost as a joke. Uh, KDE will open eventually, um, but it, it definitely causes the machine just to hang and stutter. But the Mate desktop, which I believe is pronounced Mate, uh, this one works quite well. The only kind of hang up I've had with the Mate desktop is the corner where the Bluetooth is sometimes, and we'll see if it does it this time or not, and it's a maybe, sometimes I've run into a problem where the top corner doesn't, sh it works, but it doesn't display properly where the network and Bluetooth are. And oh good, it did it this time. It, it just kind of jumbles them together. You can still click on them, they still work. It just has jumbled things together. I can get to the network, I can get to the, Sound options, it just kind of makes this weird, even if you change the screen size, it, oh, that time I fixed it. It's kind of jumbles them together a little bit and I'm not exactly sure why. And when you resize the screen both ways, it starts working perfectly fine. Now it says it could not switch monitor application, but same thing. You can still open up things perfectly fine. Uh, GN view, not using that much memory Mate doesn't uh, doesn't command too much processor uh, time or memory time to run, so you can run applications on here without sucking it all up for the desktop. So we'll go back over your systems and we'll log out of the Pi, log out. And you can also suspend these X2Go sessions too. I don't know if you noticed that was in there in the list, but like I said, it's the standard X2Go like I've demoed before in my longer video about that. Let's try another desktop. Let's try Cinnamon because I did load that one as well. Takes a little bit longer to get the Cinnamon desktop going. Now this is also a problem I had. You are currently running in fallback mode. Do you want to restart Cinnamon? No, it does not run in, it does look nice, but it does not run in like it's uh, full mode. I not really dug into the why or what parameter you need to add on there but it won't load Cinnamon on top of it. Cinnamon is basically not fully functioning in X2Go. Like I said, I haven't done a lot of research in it, but it will work, but it switches back and basically falls back to the Mate desktop, as it, but with a few extra features on there, but it does solve this problem. This works fine in here, but it's weirdly offset when you try to click on things. It opens them over there, which is just kind of strange. Even if you do a resize, not really sure the cause of that problem. But so I'm gonna say Cinnamon Desktop, eh, it doesn't work so well. So we'll log out of that. Now let's try XFCE. So we got that on there as well. There 
There we go. I'm doing all this in real time. I'm not editing out any of these. I wanted to show exactly how fast it was so you can get a feel for it. Now, XSE, you know, this works really well on here. I was I was impressed. Like, this is super lightweight, and uh, it's, let me switch over to, like, to here. It's still, you know, it's using some memory. It's open to Firefox, but as far as uh, opening fast and everything else, this one just kind of felt very responsive. Uh, obviously the browser being the browser, but in terms of the other applications on here, it works quite well. Like it opens up fast, the no lag on the screen or anything like that. XFCE seems to be the lightest weight one here. So that definitely is a good choice there. And no messing up over here in the corners. These work perfectly fine to be able to get to wired VPN connections, et cetera, et cetera. No problems there. Log out, shut down, works fine. So we're gonna hit log out. Now, the last one we're gonna go ahead and try is KDE. And I already know GNOME has some issues as well on here. Uh, KDE does as well. And we'll go ahead and connect to it and watch what happens to the processor on this. It's gonna completely pin it just trying to open KDE on here. But it will eventually open, which is kind of neat. So it gives me hope for maybe a future generation of Raspberry Pi, or maybe they come up with a um, plasma light if, for people that really like the customization of the interface and maybe they'll figure out a way to make it work a little better, but there's there's certainly gonna be some challenges. You can see it just racking up the memory here, and all we're trying to do is load the desktop. Come on. <laughs> it's still thinking. It chews on this a little while before it even gets to uh, somewhat usable. The Pi is just not really cut out for this. Uh, let's log in. Yes, the password on our Pi is one, two, three, four, five, six. When we set up these demos, I use easy passwords because I have to type them sometimes a lot when you're uh, setting up YouTube demos. <laughs> let's see. Let's try and open up something in here. There's the activities window. Let's actually also uh, open with Dolphin. It kind of reminds me of like a Windows crash trying to run it on here. The Pi just can't quite handle it and uh, it just doesn't work well. So it's way laggy in terms of screen. So does it work? Uh, that's subjective. I wouldn't really call that working. Well, we're gonna say kind of working um, on there. So, all right, yeah, that session's closed now. But the Pi does work with Xtico. Uh, that was kind of the point of the video. And we haven't had any problems with it. As long as you're using one of the lighter weight desktops like Mate or XFCE seems to work really, really well on the Pi. This makes a great device to uh, deploy remotely for low wattage, low cost, and have a pretty basic, you know, easy system by which you can access other systems. Like I said, some of the use cases are if you have to enumerate a network or you have to monitor some other uh, remote. We actually have a client with some HVAC systems and this might be an interesting way for easy access if you need something with a web browser to access it, but you don't wanna leave a computer on site uh, running all the time just so you can get into the interface and the control interfaces, which are all web driven and it's local to the network on there. Um, the last thing I wanna try is published applications to see how well they work on there. That's the only piece I didn't try yet, so we're gonna try this together and get a published application to work. This is uh, the ability that X2Go has, and X2Go clients work with both Windows and Linux. Uh, the server only runs, well, there's ways to, but specifically we're only talking about running it on Linux, uh, not really Windows. But now let's try actually running a published application for the Pi. Now to run a published application, uh, we're going to do this. Do that and then uh, just paste it in here. Single application, the command's gonna be the path to it. So that should work right there. And now it should run Firefox running from the Pi, but locally here. That's still that stuck KDE session, I think. And there we go, Firefox running on the Raspberry Pi, but being rendered locally here. 
So you can see when we open up, let's open up a few things. We'll open up uh, my Lawrence system site and we'll open another tab. And all this is happening on the Pi, but bringing the application local to me. This is actually a really interesting use case if you ever uh, want to run the browser on your computer, but have the back end on the other computer, which means it's accessing that computer's local network resources. So this Pi would be actually using the web browser, but running from the IP address of wherever it's located and have access to those local resources. So that's kind of neat and it does work right here. You can see it pulling a lot of data and uh, or a lot of processing power in the background here, but published applications work fine too. I'll leave links on my X to go where I go more in depth on how all of these work. Like I said, uh, it, you can get really in depth with it. It's got a lot of features. X to go is a really powerful tool and works really well, but it works great with the Raspberry Pi 4. I was really impressed with the performance of it. It's a very usable product. All right, thanks. And thank you for making it to the end of the video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more content from the channel, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon if you like YouTube to notify you when new videos come out. If you'd like to hire us, head over to lawrencesystems.com, fill out our contact page, and let us know what we can help you with and what projects you'd like us to work together on. If you want to carry on the discussion, head over to forums.lawrencesystems.com where we can carry on the discussion about this video, other videos, or other tech topics in general. Even suggestions for new videos, they're accepted right there on our forums, which are free. Also, if you'd like to help the channel out in other ways, head over to our affiliate page. We have a lot of great tech offers for you. And once again, thanks for watching and see you next time.